Welcome to the B-Sound Podcast. Another solo podcast, just like we do every Friday. So today is Friday, August 20th of 2021. And what can I say? So far, it's been a pretty good day. Started off and journaled a few things, which is always a good way to start the day. A little pro tip on uh, journaling, something I just learned recently myself, is that uh, the one of the best ways I've found to start off my day and start journaling is to ask myself a particular question. And the question I've been asking myself lately is, what will it take to make today a great day? And then you answer that and you start off on the right foot that way is basically what happens. And so, you know, in my journal, I basically came up with the same thing I normally would come up with, which is basically to have a great day would be to take care of all my needs, you know, like um, my physical needs, my mental needs, emotional needs, it's just the needs that you normally have in order to have a fulfilling life. And I added social needs on there as well. And then, you know, to make it a great day, I thought that it would be great to fulfill part of what I believe is my purpose, which is to create, create something like this podcast and music, things like that, as well as to I'm I'm trying to remember what it was, the other thing. So it was, oh yeah, the other thing was to um, help others. You know, I, I like to have at least positive interactions with others, something that's going to be valuable to another person, which is what I think, you know, makes part of it's something I look forward to daily, right? Is to have a some kind of positive interaction, some kind of positive influence on someone else's day. You know, that it's not necessarily necessary, but it's something that I think helps make for a better day. So I think I've done most of that already today. And it's at the time of recording this, it's 2.41 p.m., so I think it's off to a pretty good start already, you know, so as far as getting everything done that I wanted to do, most of it is already done. I might have one or two little things here and there left to do, but the bulk of it has been done and it, it feels good. So I'd recommend, you know, if you want to get something done, if you want to have a good day, ask yourself the question, what would it take to have a good day and figure that out? You know, you might not come up with it on the very first time you try, but it's a great step in the right direction. So let's talk about the music side of things. I have another topic I'm going to get into later about it's it's a little more dramatic, so to speak. But we'll save the drama for a little bit later. As far as music goes, what I've been up to musically this week is the band. It was, so we were supposed to do a video this week, but I had talked to the person who we hired to do the video and I had told them that we get together on Thursdays. Well, we had scheduled something for this week, except I forgot to check in with the band to make sure that that was okay. And when I did, this was already told to me and I just totally spaced out on it. But um, Dick Boots was out of town this whole week th from Thursday to sometime next week, which put us in a position where we couldn't do a Thursday session to, you know, just to to have some kind of uh, video being done. So that had to be put on the back burner. However, I really wanted to get together this week and make some music. So we decided to go ahead and get together 
And and this is on the heels of last week. If you heard about it, you know, what happened last week, I botched the recording, right? And we still had a song that needed a proper recording because of this. So I was like, let's get together early this week, whenever we can. And the guys agreed to it. So we got together, what was it, Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday, I think. And we recorded the song that we didn't get to last week. And so I went ahead and finished that up um, yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, yesterday. So, yeah, it was recorded. We recorded all the basic tracks Tuesday night, and I finished up the lyrics and vocals Wednesday night and uploaded it to the guys, and I think it came out okay. It's it's a different kind of song for us in some ways, and in some ways it's very much along the stuff that we normally do. Um, it's called Higher, as in, like, your love is lifting me higher. Only it's not quite about... <laughs> your love lifting me higher, but it is in some ways, actually, now that I think about it. Um, cause it is about love and it is about going higher. Just, I guess in a roundabout way, it's a similar thing as your love is lifting me higher. Except I guess in the case of this, it's not necessarily someone else's love. I mean, it is in a way, but it, it's mostly inner love for yourself and giving that to others, which is lifting everyone higher. Anyway, it's something you guys will have to hear for yourself someday. Hopefully, um, hopefully I can release it to you guys. I, we have a stack. I mean, we're at like, we've got to be at like song 60 at this point of unreleased songs. There's one or two on this channel. The phone phone call song, I think, was just the song of the week that week, and I, and we decided to videotape the recording of it, and so that's on here. It wasn't a particularly great song, but it's not a particularly bad one either. It's kind of just the average of what you might get for us on a week. It's a, it's a weird one, though, compared to the rest of ours, but that's kind of par for the course. Let's see, what else is going on? There's some other projects I'm working on, but I can't, I'm not, I just, I can't talk about them just yet. And those are musical projects that are, I'm working on with other people, you know, other people's projects. It, it's the reason I can't talk about it because it's not my project to talk about, but I'm helping them. And, uh, hopefully the collaboration between us, um, I can make it sound as amazing as it sounds to hopefully I can make it sound as, as amazing as it needs to sound because it sounds great as it is. I've heard demos. Um, they've been sending me, you know, boombox demos basically. And it sounds, I, I hear the potential in there and it's my job to bring that potential out so that others hear what it actually is rather than just the potential. So that is something I'm looking forward to. All right, so this might be a short one, but I'm going to get into this um, this bit of drama, I guess you could call it, which I don't really think it's that dramatic. To me, it's not dramatic, but it's like I thought, you know what? This is a good teachable moment or at least an insight onto about how I see the world and and you know, what I think works for me. And I think it would help others to see this kind of insight, right? Like that's, that's kind of what I do these things for is to provide some kind of value to anyone who sticks around to hear what I have to say. You know, I, I wouldn't be doing these podcasts if I didn't think they offered value to you, the listener out there, you, the viewer. So how do we start this off? There's a video I put out called um, When the Screaming Trees Played Nearly Lost You with Lane Staley of Alice in Chains. And I'm interviewing 
one of the Screaming Trees members, their guitar player, songwriter, he's, his name is uh, Gary Lee Connor. And someone made a, uh, you know, some comment trying to like troll on Gary Lee Connor. Basically, he said he looks like Neil Young and he wasn't good friends with Mark. And they put like this laughy face. And instead of, you know, writing off this as like, oh, it's a troll or whatever. I, I got curious and I said, how do you know? And he replied and said, I read Mark's memoir. To which I replied, well, so did I. It's a good book, but still one view of a story. No one but the two of them could truly know what kind of relationship they had. And the reason I say this is because I think that it's just Mark's view, Mark Lanigan's view of the story between the two of them. Like he, if you, like I listened to the audiobook, right? I thought that would be the best way to take in his book was Mark Lanigan's book was to listen to him speak the words that he wrote on the page. I just felt like that would be, you know, you can kind of hear inflection and things like that. And you'd kind of get a little bit more of the picture than just reading it and making up certain things in your head, which it all is being made up in your head anyway, which is kind of my whole point here is no matter what they're saying, no matter what Mark says, it's just his view of the story that he can remember. And even in that, it, you can find a couple incongruencies and inconsistencies on between what he says and what his behavior is. And that's because we as humans are just incongruent and inconsistent a lot, especially you know, in our younger years when we're trying to figure shit out. And this is a, a time in Mark's life when he was trying to figure things out and Gary Lee's life. So all I'm saying is we can't truly know what happened because it's not us, right? It's not who we're not the two people in the party. And as far as does he look like Neil Young? Maybe. So I don't care. Whatever. Maybe Neil Young looks like him. <laughs> you know, it's the sideburns. But uh, anyway, so someone else decided they were going to chime in and said, hey, Dan B., that makes no sense. It's obvious from the book Mark didn't like him. And I said, is it? I'm not so sure, but we all take what we will in our interpretations. And again, I'm just saying that's how you interpret it. I don't know if I agree with that, but that's fine. Then he replied, oh, good grief. It's very clear. Do you need me to quote sentences? And I'm thinking at this point, like, quote sentences. I have I know the book. I've, I've listened to it. I understand it. Yeah, I don't need you to quote anything to me. It's fine. I, you can have your opinion about this. So I said, no, it's all good. I see it like this. Have you ever broke up with someone and you tell yourself how much they suck? Because in no way can it be both of your faults that the relationship ended. This is a breakup and it's still under a microscope today. We all paint pictures in our mind of what happened in the past and how we interpret those stories as our narrative today. That does not make them real to anyone but the narrator and the people willing to believe them. So what I'm saying here, you know, in case I read that too stiff or something, is how many people have you seen and they're totally heads over heels for each other. They, they dig each other a lot. And after they break up, they're like, that was the worst person I've ever met. They did this and this to me, and it was awful. And I can't believe I ever even let them in my life. Well, at some point, things were working in that relationship. Something about that relationship clicked. But the narrative changes because the feelings change towards each other. But it's not always the truth, right? Like as an outside person, you can see that what the truth is. But even if you truly believe like nothing about that was ever good, well, you wouldn't probably be in it if it wasn't uh, valuable to you in some way. And of course, I'm willing to be wrong on this, but I just feel like it's open to be interpreted in many ways like there 
there's no black and white here. You know, even so, even if somebody says, hey, this relationship was awful, you know, perhaps it was, perhaps it ended awfully, you know, perhaps there were things along the way that made it awful. But it doesn't mean that they never liked each other. But that's the story he's telling now. That's all I'm saying. And and we can't know. Again, we cannot know the true thing between the two of them. I bet even they don't know the true thing between the two of them because they both have their own narrative about it. And the way they see things in the past. We all know that, you know, you can think you know something forward and backwards about your own life. And let's say somebody digs up. Okay, here's an example. There was there's a guy who I played in a band with who passed away this year. And people, you know, so a lot of the people who we knew that were mutual, you know, we met up for his for his to honor his passing and telling stories and things. And it's like somebody told a story about how one time on stage well, my, my, I'll just put it like this. My ex-wife was there and she told a story about how what she, one of the things she remembers was that he and I were on stage and his wife and her share a very close birthday. They're like two days apart. And my friend and I, I guess, gave them a, had, had the room sing happy birthday to them. And, I kind of remembered it. I, I wasn't sure about this, but I was like, yeah, okay. It sounds like something I would do. We'll flash forward to a couple of weeks ago and I found the recording of this, which I didn't even know existed. I was looking for something else and I found a recording of this and was able to actually hear what went down. And, you know, to my recollection of what that is, is basically he said, hey, we have a couple birthdays. I think it would be great if everybody's saying happy birthday to these two people that we care about. And I went along with it. So it was his idea, you know, but it was like, it sounded like from the story that was told at at the uh, the gathering that we both had the idea. So it was interesting that how people who were there have a slightly skewed version of it because it's what their own narrative was. Right. And even, even I couldn't remember the narrative, but there's physical evidence there that show something to the contrary. So my point is just because we have a memory does not make it real. That's the whole point here. So to get back to the comments there, they replied and said again, that makes no sense. In Mark's book, he said what he thought about Gary at the time and his opinions haven't changed. I'm not sure he said that his opinions haven't changed. Now, the narrative that's being put out there, you know, they when the book came out, there was a big fight between the ex-band members because it's, in my point of view, it seemed like the band members were upset that Mark put out this book and, you know, there was some stuff that was supposed to be kept between everybody and it, it wasn't. Something like that. Some kind of pact they had that he had broke. And it's and then, you know, Rolling Stone takes over the story and it's like they're both angry and upset at each other. All the, you know, a big fight, whatever. But who knows? Who knows? That could be just put out there to sell more books. I mean... If you know any of the background of this book before it came out, there was an interview Mark Lanigan had given. And you can find this on YouTube where he talks about he can't there was a there's a part in the book that he can't talk about in the interview between him and a member of Oasis that got really nasty. Because and the reason he couldn't talk about it was 
the publicist said, hey, you need to keep some juicy parts so people will read the book. And of course, once the, the book was released, that juicy part got out. And lo and behold, Oasis shows up on one of the members of Oasis show up on uh, social media and starts a fart, uh, a fart, starts a fight with Mark Lanigan. And, you know, how is this not good for his book sales, right? It's it's almost like you got to wonder if behind the scenes are like, hey, that was a good, good show. Thanks for putting that on and helping me sell some books. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Send me. How's the kids and, you know, wife, that kind of thing. So, you know, just because you think you know the narrative and, and now, of course, I don't know the narrative. That's just the way I what I've seen. But if I saw something the contrary, I'd I'm willing to believe it. Right. It's like. It's all about our belief system, though. It's not necessarily truth. So I wrote back and said, hey, it's all good. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It's just something I feel can't be known, and it's fine to disagree. Because it is. It's fine to disagree with me. I don't care. Like, if you disagree with me, cool. And I'll examine what you're saying and see if it makes sense. And, you know, because I know that I'm not the smartest person. I know that I can't know everything. And so if your thing makes sense, I'm going to pack it away as something like, okay, well, there's a possibility that this is right. And there, and like I said, there's a possibility he's right. I'm, I'm not saying he's not, he's wrong. I'm just saying, I don't think it can be known. It's just a simple disagreement, right? He replies and says, it can't be known question mark. The guy wrote, he didn't like the other guy that makes it known. And I say to that, and yet you only know what they want you to know. It doesn't mean anything unless we give it meaning. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I personally cannot know. And I wasn't there and I didn't go through what they went through. And then I guess in order to get out of the discussion, he says, I'm going to join Aaron in getting out of here, which I don't know what he means. Unless somebody named Aaron said, hey, this is dumb. I'm leaving. But I don't see that anywhere. But the whole point I wanted to make was that just because somebody tells you a story does not make it real, you know, and I'll say that about what I'm telling you here, just because I'm telling you the story doesn't make it real and that's okay. But, you know, consider all the points of view you can, because it's one of the best ways to figure out who you are, right? If you can really examine all sides and get through that cognitive dissonance where you have these two sides fighting in your head and just be okay with there being conflicting information and then just taking the best of that information and and trying to understand all of the information, you're going to do your mental health a world of good. At least that's the way I see it. So with that being said, if you have not subscribed already to the channel, I'd love you to subscribe here. I'm not sure about who's going to be on the podcast this coming week. I've talked to somebody and he said he was going to do it. Um, We haven't nailed down an exact time yet, so I don't want to say for sure he's coming on, but... If he is, great. It's going to be a wild time because this is someone who I I know personally and someone who I love. And it would be kind of cool to talk to somebody who I have a past with. You know, because on this podcast, we've talked to a lot of people who I don't know that I'm trying to learn from. but and, And I can learn some things from this guy for sure. But... It's going to be a whole new experience for me, and I look forward to that. So hopefully that happens. But like I said, I can't say who it is because I just don't know if it's going to happen yet or not. So if you like this video, please hit like. If you dislike it, go ahead and hit the dislike, and that's fine. 
that just helps me out either way. You know, one way it's like, hey, make more of this stuff. And the other way is like, hey, you know what? This is this is not the thing I'm looking for today. And that's fine, too. I'm not going to take offense. So. And also, please comment. I, I love reading what you have to say, even if it's something like the discussion I was having with that person. Because. Like I said, it's like you, you want to get through your different cognitive dissonances, right? Like you want to make sure that the path you're on is the right path. And the only way to figure that out for sure is kind of understand the other paths. So with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and be sound.